My name is Andre, welcome to Salvage Secrets and today I'm going to share with you the training that I did in our private Facebook group. It's called Using a Broker to Buy Cars from IAA and Copper Salvage Auctions. If you like stuff like that, make sure you subscribe, leave a review, let me know what else you want me to talk about and with that said, let's jump into the training guys. All right guys, so today, today we're going to be talking about a very important topic which is called should you use a broker at Copart and IAA? This seems to be uh, a common question in the group. Uh, a lot of people are wondering, like, should you use a broker? Should you buy as, as a pr private buyer? What about the fees and stuff like that? So today we're going to talk about that. So let's jump right into it. And uh, first, as most of you probably know, there are three types of accounts at Copart and IAA, right? The first one is guest account. And the guest account is free. And the guest account allows you to log into the auctions, uh, browse the vehicles, uh, could, uh, actually join the auctions and, and watch the auctions but you cannot bid you can only watch if you uh, if you're the brand new to auctions to salvage auctions it's a good way for you to familiarize yourself with the the websites the auctions how the auction process works and stuff like that it's absolutely free all you need is email address and your name and you can register right then the next type of account is public public account so this is for people who don't have a business license they're just private individuals and they want they're looking to buy cars from Copart or IAA right so the public account allows you to bid on cars uh, it does have a very important restriction though most cars at IAA and Copart actually are available only to licensed buyers which means uh, automotive license buyers like car dealers, junkyards, repair shops, things like that. So in other words, you need a business account, business license, business, uh, business account. To to bid on these cars. So. The way it works is, you know, these regulations are actually determined by the states, not by the auctions. So most states um, actually restrict your ability as a private person to buy from, from auctions, whether it's clean title cars or salvage cars. I think it has to do mostly with uh, liability issues. So uh, they, they just, uh, they feel like it's way too much risk for like just a regular person who is not familiar with, with the auctions or like with the, uh, auto industry to just go and buy cars at these auctions because there's high high probability of buying a car that has some unexpected issues or something uh, potentially hazardous like missing airbags and stuff like that which is against a lot of laws so to limit their liability a lot most states decided to just limit these auctions to dealers only or licensed bidders only and uh, this way if you're just a regular person you cannot buy these cars which is good uh, good and bad you know it's bad if you if you if you're not a licensed buyer but it's good for licensed buyers because it limits the amount of people bidding on these cars which which actually gives you the possibility to get a better deal on the car there is these three three basic types of accounts right and uh, like i said if you are if you don't have a uh, automotive license account you're just a public public buyer you are you're limited very limited uh, in the inventory so about 80 percent of cars and salvage auctions you cannot bid or buy them uh, I, i'll actually list uh, let me see if i can list the states there are a few states that actually allow you to bid without a license and let me see I, I'll just list them here. It's Arizona, um, Idaho, Louisiana, Minnesota, Oregon, 
PA and Vermont. Pennsylvania and Vermont. So these states allow you, allow anybody to attend these auctions and, and buy cars by law. Uh, so if you live in one of these states, there is a chance you, you may be able to, to bid on, on uh, salvage cars without business license, right? And again, even with that said, right, some auctions, even though they, they are allowed by law to, uh, to sell cars to public buyers, they still limit the auctions to dealers only because they don't want the liability. So you are very limited if you're a public buyer, right? And, uh, you know, it's basically not much you can do. And if you don't have a business license, you might be wondering, okay, so what, what am I supposed to do, Andre? How do I buy these cars? Well, there is a way, <laughs> as you probably guessed already, and it's called using a broker. Using a broker. So to put it simply, guys, broker is... It's basically a third party company. They have all the necessary licenses to bid on pretty much any cars. Um, and what they do is they buy the car on your behalf and then they sell it to you. So when you're using a broker, you're using a third party company, uh, which is not technically affiliated with uh, the, uh, the auction. And you buying the, you're buying the car from them. So they buy the car from the auction and then they sell it to you. And this is how these brokers work. And you know nowadays uh, this industry is pretty pretty old, so a lot of this stuff is automated. It's it's pretty easy process to use a broker. All you need to do is uh, basically log into the you know open the account with them, make a deposit, and you can from s using some brokers you can bid straight from their website, and some brokers just send you login credentials to Copart or IAA. And then you just log in and you act like a regular buy licensed bidder, but you, you're basically bidding through a broker. So it's pretty straightforward process. All right, so now let's talk about what I, should you use a broker or not, right? Like if you, let's say, uh, you know, you're looking at a car and you, you, you're wondering, should I use a broker? Should I buy it myself? You know, obviously we're not going to talk about business license licenses and accounts because if this if, if you if you're not an automotive business or if you're not a dealer, the, you cannot even you cannot open this type of account. So we're not going to talk about this in this video. Uh, we're going to talk about whether you should buy as a public buyer or whether you should use a broker, right? So there's a couple of considerations. Obviously, the first step. The first step is actually to find the car you want to buy, right? First of all, that's like the step number one. Before you register with the auction, before you, uh, you know, obviously you can open the guest account, but before you open the public account with, with the auction or before you register with the broker, find the car that you want to buy. And then you should, you should look and see if, is it in the state that allows public buyers to bid? Is it in one of these states or actually, uh, not only the location but the type of paperwork right so if it has let's say arizona salvage title or pennsylvania salvage title or something so basically you should check whether it, the auction allows you to bid on it as a public buyer and you can you can actually check it um on the lot description and maybe in, in the, one of the the other videos i'll show you how it's done because i can't do it with this setup right now i can't share my screen with you guys but uh it's pretty straightforward in the right top corner of the lot description you can always see uh, if, if you are eligible to bid on this vehicle and once you found this car right that you won now you have an option if it's if it's not available for public buy buyers you have no other option but to go through the broker it's pretty easy right but let's say you found a car in arizona and it's available and you live in arizona so you, you can bid on it as a public buyer now you should decide whether you, you, you should use a broker or bid yourself. Obviously, it all comes down to, uh, to a few things, right? And most important is, is the numbers, right? Is it worth it? How can you save the most money, right? Should you go to, through the broker or buy it yourself? So to register, to register with the auction, right? Registration fee. To register with the auction as a buyer, you have to pay fee, right? In Copart, 
and it's a slight difference between Copac and IA. It's two types of accounts, right? You can open an account for $59 a year. This is like a basic account, right? And you can open a premium account. It's $200 a year. And an IAA is only one type of account and it's $200 a year. So this fee you have to pay in order to register with the auction and start bidding on cars. Now, as far as brokers go, right? There are many different types of brokers, many websites, and you can find them, you can actually find them on Copart and IAA websites. Uh, on Copart, you just go to the services tab, I believe, on top of the page, and there's a, there's a drop down menu, and you can click on the brokers tab, and it's going to show you the list of brokers. There's a lot of them, at least like probably 10 or more listed there. And on IAA, if you scroll down all the way down on the home page, on the left corner, you will find you will find the link that says brokers, right? So there are many different brokers. They have different terms and conditions, obviously. But uh, uh, on average, right? Uh, on average, these are the broker fees. Let me show you. So re registration fees, right? Most, most brokers require a registration fee, similar to like the, the auction fee. Uh, it's and it ranges. Uh, so let me write down broker registration fee, and it actually ranges from zero dollars to about about um, two hundred dollars a year, a year, and transaction fee. Transaction fee on average is about 250 to $300 or more. And it, sometimes it's more, sometimes it's a little less, you know. So basically there is a fee to register with the broker and it's, it's, uh, it, some brokers offer it for free. So free registration, you only pay if you buy a car through them. And some brokers require like a $100, $150 registration fee, something like that. So it's comparable to the auction fee, right? And important thing, guys, if you register with the broker, there is no need to register with the auction to bid on cars. So once you have the account with the broker, you pay the fee, you don't need to pay this fee. So as you can see, it's pretty much, it's very comparable. You, you are saving little money if you go, let's say if you open an account with Copart for $59 versus paying, let's say $200, right? But again, you can find a broker that doesn't charge the registration fee. And I'll show you a couple examples later on. So, you know, right here is, there's not much difference. The only big difference, well, kind of a big difference, right, is the transaction fee. So transaction fee is the fee, if you buy a car through the broker, they're, they're going to charge you the transaction fee, which ranges anywhere from like 250 to $300 or more, depending on the final price of the car, the broker's terms of, and conditions. And this also, in, I, I included the document fee as well. Um, and, you know, sometimes there is like a small document fee is like $20, $50. Some brokers charge a little more. And uh, there is a $50 broker fee if you buy a car through, through Copart, right? So, so uh, as you can see, guys, right? If, you know, if you ask me, right, should you, should you bid through a broker, right? But let's say if you register with the broker, it, it, it gives you the opportunity to bid on any car on any car without restrictions so if you if even if you found the car that you can bid on right now as a public buyer right and you register with the auction for 59 dollars let's say with copart and then you 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 didn't buy the car it went for too much money so now you're back to square one and now the next car you 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 find you better hope it's going to be available as a public buyer but very very few cars are available for public buyers guys just take my word for it it's like 80 percent of cars are not available so me personally, I would strongly suggest you go through the broker and it's, it's just gives you access to more, more in, way more inventory. And uh, there are also other benefits of using the broker. You know, the, uh, the first one of the benefits is, like I said, the major one is access to any car that in the auction. Also, another benefit of the broker is 
you don't need to pay the auction registration fee so you can find a broker that doesn't charge registration fee and you can bid on cars until you actually buy something w without paying this fee you know that's that's another good thing also a huge thing with brokers is shipping assistance most brokers actually provide assistance with shipping and this is like a big part of their business uh, so you can you can get on the phone with them you can get a quote and you can see how much is going to cost you to ship the car from the auction to to your place and usually they have pretty competitive quotes much better than the ones that the auction provides or if you try to find a shipper yourself uh, so that's another good thing shipping assistance also another good thing some brokers actually uh, give you opportunity to uh, to ship cars overseas for those of you guys who are looking to ship cars overseas this is a big big deal and they even offer you services like cutting car for parts and like loading containers and all this stuff a lot of extra services right so for all these reasons guys i would strongly suggest you use a broker the only uh, so yeah i mean it's like the only possible way i can think of if when you're not gonna you're not gonna use a broker is let's say if you're just starting out you're like brand new to the to the salvage business game and then you decided to buy your first car and it's like a really really cheap car like 200 uh, like two thousand dollars three thousand dollars something like that and it's a car park and and you know you, then you you might be you might be better off go, going through car parts because uh you're gonna save probably a couple hundred dollars in fees like two three hundred dollars if you buy the car but that's the only scenario i can see and um, if the car is more expensive i'm going to show you in a second another aspect of buying these cars and and uh, we're going to talk about auction fees and see if you're actually saving money on auction fees if you use a broker all right so let me just flip this board real quick all right this is like a really fancy diagram I got ready for you guys all right guys so look at this diagram now in addition to what I said before right let's see if actually if using the broker actually helps you to save money on, on buyer fees uh, so as you know auctions make money on fees right so fees are a huge part of uh, of their revenue and we have to be familiar with these fees because they can add up really really quickly so on this table here I put so the auction fee actually depends on on the final price of the car the more expensive the car that you buy generally the higher the buyer fee right so right here I made like a, a diagram of uh, four cars four samples three thousand dollar car five thousand dollar car ten thousand dollar car and fifteen thousand dollar car right and this is copart this is IAA and this these are two types of fees business license fee and the public buyer fee right and the same thing on this side so let's say if you buy a car for three thousand dollars at copart and you bid as a, as a business light as a licensed business your fee is going to be four hundred dollars the buyer fee if you bid as a public buyer the fee is six hundred dollars and iaa is pretty similar now if you buy a five thousand dollar car as a business uh as a business a licensed business the fee is 525 the public buyer is 725 so it's, as you can see it's higher and it's about 200 dollars difference between these right so that that's like pretty much a general rule if you buy as a business buyer your fee is roughly like about 150 200 dollars less and here 525 and 750 at ia but here's the deal guys look this is where it gets interesting right if the car if you if the car you buy is over five thousand dollars right and you buy it at IAA their fee for public buyers is 15 percent uh 15 percent of the sale price so anything over five thousand dollars they charge you 15 percent in buyer fees which is pretty ridiculous if you ask me so let, let's look at, at a ten thousand dollar car right at copart the business license fee is 600 public is 800 at IAA the license $600 the license buyer fee but the but the public buyer fee jumps to $1500 15% of 10,000 right that, that's ridiculous that's like more than twice as much and then if we're talking about $15,000 car well again see copart goes here goes to the percentages 4 and 
so 600 for lice for business buyer and 1050 for private but IAA you see the the license buyer is six, 650 and public buyer is 2250 so 2250 dollars if you buy as a private person so f as you can see from this I think it's pretty clear that especially if you buy the car at IAA anything over five thousand dollars you don't want to buy it as a pu as a public buyer because your buyer fee is just going to be ridiculous and this here on the bottom is it shows you which which fee you pay if you use a broker right so if you use a broker at copart you still pay the public public buyer fee that's just the way it's set up that's the way copart set it up obviously they want to make more money so that's that's why they did it like that but still copart public public buyer fee is pretty much you know like it, it's somewhat reasonable right seven percent is not too crazy and if you buy at IAA most brokers uh, and pretty much all brokers that I called or I used they give you opportunity to to buy the cars through their through their license right and save money on fees so you will pay the business the, the license business fee if you buy through a broker at IAA this so this is another strong reason to use brokers for anything over five thousand dollars at IA because just because you save so much money in fees and 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 not only that but you know as you can see the difference even here like 525 and 750 right it's 200 dollars difference so you're saving that money too so 100 percent if you buy through IA use a broker don't go don't buy as a public buyer copart like I said if it's something cheap and uh, not not only if it's cheap but like let's say you're a copart and you found the car that you want and it's in a state that allows public buyers to bid then there is really no strong reason for you to register with the broker if you can buy it yourself because you're not going to save money on auction fees and you don't have to pay transaction fees to the broker right so you can you might you might choose to go through as a public buyer so that's that's your decision one another drawback of using the broker is delays with paperwork uh, so because like I, like I told you before when you use a broker it's basically a third-party company uh, they buy the car for you and then they sign it over to you as a buyer so that process the paperwork uh, process takes a little while some some brokers say it might take up to four or six weeks or longer so that's that's a you know kind of a drawback versus buying it directly from the auction and uh, Chris is asking do brokers require you to use their shipping services in my experience they you know um, the ones I used, they didn't really require it, but they did offer it, offer me those services, right? And I, I haven't used brokers that much. I only use them in some states that require a special licenses that even I don't have as a, as a dealer. Because, you know, a lot of states have some crazy regulations, you know. In some, in some states, even if you're a dealer or you, li or you license automotive business, you, can, you still cannot bid on their salvage cars. You need special permits that you can only get in their states like alabama bid card for example or uh, I, I believe in wisconsin there are some restrictions so you, you you need to have additional licenses to to actually bid in those states even if you're a dealer or or you know like a, a business buyer so in those cases uh, i went through the broker and i was able to bid on these cars so that's like like i said that's the major benefit of using the broker guys not only saving uh, you know saving money in this case in IA saving a lot of money on buyer fees but also you get access to pretty much any inventory you can buy cars parts only cars junk whatever you whatever you want with junk title certificate of destruction you can bid them in states that have restrictions so there's a lot of benefits and plus also you know these people have been in the business for a while so if you're like brand new and you have questions about how the the auction works or like how the bidding works or like how much should you pay like you no know, things like that you know you, you might call them and, and talk to a real person and th they might be able to advise you or at least prevent you from doing something crazy you know which is another, another positive so using the broker is is, is is not a bad thing guys that's the bottom line right so uh, keep that in mind also some states uh, it gets a little tricky when let's say you live in the same st in the same state and you you buy in the car uh, to register in the same state state where you live in 
some states like California and Florida are pretty tricky. They have different regulations. So make sure you familiarize, familiarize yourself with, with the terms of, and conditions of the broker before you bid and buy something, especially if you are in Florida or California because they have some additional regulations that make it a little bit more difficult. Okay guys, so I guess I'll end, I'll end this uh, presentation here. And before I do that, let me, let me do, let me give you some recommendations of the brokers that I personally used and the ones I think offer a great value for the money, right? So if you go to Copart and IAA websites, uh, the most famous ones, uh, the most famous brokers in Copart is Auto Bidmaster. Um, it's like a featured broker, the first one in, uh, on the page in huge letters, you know, this is, this, this is the one they recommend. And let me just write it down, Auto Bidmaster. Auto Bidmaster. Com. So Copart and at IEA, I believe it's uh, salvagebid.com. So these are like the featured brokers. And to be honest with you, I never used either of those. I'm sure they have, you know, great technology. They're good people, but they're not cheap. Let's say Auto Bid Master. You know the transaction uh, transaction fee is two hundred ninety nine dollars, or ten percent of the purchase price. So that's on top of the auction fee, which is not cheap, obviously, right? And I think salvage bid is pretty similar, and they charge you um, up to three up to three hundred uh, two three hundred dollars a year to register with them. So. Uh, I can't say if they're good or bad, I'm sure, but they're like, they're kind of like the most popular out there. So a lot of people use them. They've been around for a long time um, and you can bid straight from their website. So you just register with their website and, and they have functionality to bid r right through their website. Right. So I personally haven't used them because I feel like they're pretty expensive. Uh, the ones, the one that I, that I, I did use though, it's called advanced motors. Advanced motors LLC. And the website, I believe it's advanced motors LLC.com. This, these guys are located in, in uh, Michigan. And they're really, really good. Um, this is like a small, small company. So you can get on the phone with them. Everything is pretty straightforward. I used them at least twice, tw two or three times. And I had no issues, even though I didn't end up buying anything. But, you know, I had no problem getting my deposit back or answer any questions answered and stuff like that. And another benefit of Advanced Motors is that they actually brokers for both IAA and Copart and Copart so most most bro most other brokers they like specialize on one auction right so like auto bid master is only Copart and salvage bid is only IAA right but advanced motors actually can buy cars for you both at IAA and Copart and the membership fee I believe is like a hundred dollars a year but they give you uh, 45 days free trial. So you can register with them for free for 45 days, bid on cars, and then you can just cancel your account and they're not gonna charge you the $100 registration fee. And their transaction fee is flat $200. Transaction fee. So uh, plus, you know, there is, I, I believe it's like $50 broker fee and some possibly some uh, document fee, but this is really good because it, it doesn't matter if you buy a car for 3000 or for 10,000, they still charge you $200, uh, which is pretty good. And like I told you with IAA, they can save you money on, uh, cause you, you bid through their account and they, they'll save you, you only pay the business license fee at IAA, which is really, really nice. 
so I definitely recommend these guys they're pretty good and I'm not affiliated with them they didn't pay me for this or anything like that this is just my experience and another one that I found um, uh, that that seems pretty good is a better bid a better bid these guys have been around also for for a while I believe the website is a better touch that bid right and they have similar fee structure as advanced motors the only thing is is I believe there is no registration fee so you don't have to pay to register with them and start bidding the only thing is you need a deposit and transaction fee I believe is $250 so it's a little higher but you know and another another reason I mentioned these guys is they actually offer uh, car dismantling so if you're shipping cars overseas somebody was asking in the group the other day about uh, uh, cutting cars for parts and stuff like that these guys actually offer the service and you can go on we their website and you can see the the prices and ask them questions and stuff like that so I would definitely I would definitely check these two out versus going with this expensive guys you know um,